Hello, this is Eloisa with Math Leopard. Today we are going to find the parametric equations for an epicycloid curve. That is, the curve created by a fixed point of a given circle as it rolls about the circumference of another. To illustrate this, let's consider a fixed circle centered at the origin, and a second circle tangent to the first along the positive x-axis. We annotate the point where these two circles meet in red. This point is fixed with respect to the outer circle and moves along with it in concert. So as the outer circle rolls along the circumference of the inner circle, that red point will trace out a curve known as an epicycloid curve. In my illustration, the outer circle is half the diameter of the inner, hence two petals emerge with each circuit. The number of petals in each circuit will differ directly with the ratio of radii of inner to outer circle. I'd also like to note that as the outer circle rolls along the circumference of the one inside, his center remains a fixed distance from the origin, namely the sum of the two circles' radii. The parametric equations for the epicycloid curve correspond to the location of the red dot, call it P, on the outer circle. Let's rotate off the x-axis in order to complete our analysis. Zooming in, I'll call the center of the outer circle O. We note that the distance to O from the origin was the sum of the two radii A and B. Let's call this distance radius to O, or R sub O for short. Hence R sub O is equal to A plus B. Now let's look at the distance traveled along the circumference of each, that is the arc length S. It should be clear that the length traversed by the outer circle along the circumference of the inner is the same as the distance from point P along the outer circle to where the two circles touch. That is, the arc length of each is equivalent. Recall that arc length is given as radius times radian angle measure. Hence, if radius A makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, and the angle between vectors OP and R sub O is given as phi, we have that A theta must be equivalent to B times phi. This implies phi can be written as A over B times theta. Cleaning our image up a bit, Let's find the coordinates of O, call them x sub O and y sub O. x sub O is along the x-axis, hence it's adjacent to the angle theta, and can be written as r sub O cosine theta, recalling that r sub O is a plus b. We can now do the same for y sub O, as the height is opposite angle theta, we know that his coordinate is given as r sub O sine theta, or a plus b sine theta. From here, we traverse from O to point P. In order to find the coordinates of P, let's look at the right triangle made with hypotenuse OP, where width and height are constructed parallel to the x and y axes, respectively. Call them H and K. Hence, the x and y coordinates of point P can be found as follows. x will be H less than x sub O, and y will be K less than y sub O, as pictured. In order to find both H and K, let's unclutter our image once again. I'm going to leave the red dashed line at Y sub O as it's parallel to the X axis. Using the fact that alternate interior angles are equal, we have that the angle made from the horizontal at Y sub O down to R sub O, our radius from the origin to O, is also theta. As previously stated, we called the angle from R sub O to vector OP phi. Hence, the angle measure from the horizontal at y sub o down to vector op is the sum of theta and phi. Let's call the angle interior to our triangle at vertex p beta. Returning to our derivation, we note that x can be written as x sub o, or a plus b cosine theta, minus h, and y can be written as y sub o, or a plus b sine theta, minus k. But we can now express h and k using trigonometric functions. Recall that b is the length of radius op, hence x is equals to a plus b cosine theta minus b cosine beta, as h is adjacent to beta in the triangle, and y is equals to a plus b sine theta minus b sine beta, as k is opposite angle beta. We know that beta is equivalent to its alternate interior angle, that is theta plus phi. And we recall that phi can be written in terms of theta as a over b times theta. So rewriting both of our expressions with this final substitution yields both parametric equations for the epicycloid curve. x is equals to a plus b times cosine of theta minus b times cosine of the quantity 1 plus a over b times theta. 
y is equals to a plus b sine theta minus b times sine of the quantity 1 plus a over b times theta. Thanks for playing and I'll see you next time.